the sun, our star. Revered by each and every civilization throughout centuries of our history, it is vital for the emergence of life on Earth and has a special significance for the human race. Since the dawn of their existence, human beings have tried to explain the hidden mysteries of this neighboring star and to influence its activity through different rites and beliefs from both mythology and religion. The sun is our source of heat and energy. In just one second, it generates more energy than the whole of humankind has utilized in all of its history. Its surface and atmosphere change constantly, often emitting violent solar storms and currents of radiation, which reach the Earth at enormous speeds. On its surface, solar spots appear periodically, and its immense magnetic field extends throughout the entire solar system. In view of its considerable influence on humanity's life and future, in recent centuries, science has taken prominence by successfully solving some unclear questions. Discovering the sun's secrets is not only our right, but also our obligation as a species if we wish to survive. On the 6th of October 1990, Ulysses was launched from Cape Canaveral, an unmanned space probe whose objective consisted in studying the Sun and the heliosphere, not only in the ecliptic plane, but also in high latitudes. Its scientific instrumentation allowed it to take samples from both the polar regions of the Sun at five astronomical units and from the planet Jupiter's environment. It was a combined mission between the European Space Agency and NASA. It was expected to last five years, yet it was in orbit for almost 20. The Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, known as SOHO, is also a combined project between these two agencies. It studies the Sun from its core to its external atmosphere, the corona and also the solar wind, a continuous flux of electrons and protons from the Sun that fills the entire solar system at supersonic speeds, extending beyond 100 astronomical units and resulting in the heliosphere. Launched on the 2nd of December 1995, the satellite is located in a privileged spot called the Lagrange L1 point between the Earth and the Sun, one and a half million kilometers from our planet. There, SOHO enjoys an uninterrupted view of our star. Originally designed for a two-year mission, its several extensions allowed the study of solar cycles from the 22nd to the 24th in its two decades of discoveries. SOHO is, therefore, the longest scientific mission dedicated to the observation of the Sun, also contributing with new information on solar wind dynamics. Currently, it continues to function, and its chronograph is unique in allowing us to continuously observe the solar corona. The Space Research Group of the University of Alcalá played a leading role in this mission since it developed the central data processing unit of SOHO's energy particle instrument, called CEPAC. In the next few years, the launching of the Solar Orbiter, the space probe is expected. Its main objective is to study in detail some of the most important parts of the Sun, such as its interior heliosphere and its innermost and unexplored regions of our solar system in order to better understand and even to predict the behavior of our star. It will be the first satellite to offer close-up views of the polar regions of this star. Unlike Ulysses, it will be equipped with telescopes as well as in-situ instruments. This makes Solar Orbiter the space mission with the most complete set of scientific instruments for studying our star and its environment ever to be launched. The launch will take place at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The satellite will be transported in a vehicle provided by NASA and it will take approximately two years to reach its final orbit around the Sun. If every prospect is fulfilled, the mission will provide extremely important data about our star for the next seven years.
Advanced Solar Orbiter is a new combined mission between the European Space Agency and NASA. Therefore, together with the United States, numerous countries in Europe, such as Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Switzerland and the UK are involved. Twice a year, the heads of the mission meet to inform not only about the advances achieved, but also about some of the problems encountered and the steps that will be taken to solve them. Different laboratories, institutions, private companies, universities and research institutes are also committed to participating in this promising and new international space mission. Photo. Solar Orbiter es una misión destinada al estudio del Sol y su influencia en el Sistema Solar, incluida la Tierra. Este es uno de los objetivos fundamentales que tiene la Agencia Espacial Europea, el estudiar justamente nuestra estrella, que es la estrella más cercana a nosotros, que es el Sol, y la influencia que ejerce sobre todo el Sistema Solar y en particular y sobre todo, pues evidentemente, sobre la Tierra. ¿no? Va a ser la primera misión del programa que se llama Cosmic Vision, de la Agencia Espacial Europea, que va a ser lanzada, y es un programa ambicioso, que cubre desde, como acabamos de comentar, el origen del Sistema Solar, o cómo el Sol influencia en todo el sistema, hasta el estudio de las galaxias más lejanas en el cosmos, e incluso de la propia forma, o que llamamos geometría, del universo. ¿no? Eh, el, el Sol es la estrella más cercana, y el Sol controla toda nuestra vida. Es decir, es la, la fuente de todas las formas de energía que hay en este planeta, solo de la energía nuclear, ¿no? pero de todas las demás es la fuente. Es realmente lo que mantiene también la vida y también lo que puede acabar con la vida. ¿no? Por lo tanto, es algo que tenemos que conocer. Tenemos la obligación de conocer. Dependemos tanto de esta estrella que es fundamental que conozcamos sus secretos, sus misterios, cómo funciona, qué tipo de evolución va a seguir, ¿no? cómo afecta a la Tierra. Como los uh, mecanismos que tenemos de teledetección, es decir, cuando observamos con un telescopio algo en la superficie solar, el poder predecir si eso que estamos observando horas o días más tarde puede afectar a la Tierra de alguna forma. Es fundamental conocer todo eso para que toda nuestra actividad, incluso todo nuestro desarrollo como especie y toda incluso la vida en este planeta, podamos conocerlo y podamos prevenir sus posibles consecuencias. Ese es realmente el punto clave. Estamos al lado de una estrella y convivir al lado de una estrella, pues a veces no es fácil, con lo cual siempre es mejor conocerlo para poder, digamos, no manejarlo porque sería imposible, pero sí al menos poder predecir cualquier evolución futura. So the sun is a star, but it's so much closer than all the other stars that we can actually look into it in detail. So what we know is, for example, that it's made out of hydrogen and helium. Um, and the hydrogen is burned and this nuclear reaction powers a star which is uh, millions of degrees in its core and uh, a few thousand degrees on the surface and we know quite a lot about the wind that streams from the sun and how the solar wind impacts the earth and creates for example aurora, polar uh, lights and um, we know the variation of the sun that has been measured for hundreds of years But there are still things we do not understand. We do not understand the magnitude of the solar cycle variations. We know that over the last 50 years it hasn't increased, so it hasn't contributed significantly to, to our knowledge to global warming. That's something we know. But we don't know exactly how the sun ch shapes the climate overall over time scales of millions of years. And we also don't know exactly, for example, um, how the sun looks in the polar regions because they are hard to see from Earth. And this is the region, uh, reason why we fly solar orbiter, which will visit the polar regions of the sun and get close in to provide unprecedented images. Solar orbiter was first conceived in the late 1990s, and it was a few years after the launch of SOHO, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory which was another joint mission between the European Space Agency and uh, NASA. And because SOHO was such a success, people started immediately thinking about the next level, what could be done beyond what people have learned from SOHO. And there was a previous mission called Ulysses, which visited the polar regions of the sun, but had no cameras. It was supposed to be accompanied by a camera, 
space-bearing spacecraft, but that was never built. So there was always this gap of visiting the polar regions to better understand what's called the solar dynamo, which uh, triggers the uh, solar cycle and the variation of uh, solar surface variations. And uh, this is why we wanted to fly it. And the other reason was that we always felt it was important to get close to the sun to better understand the energetic particles that come out. Because the further you are away, the more mixed all these particles become. And if you get close into the sun, you can actually sample the pristine solar wind. This is why Solar Orbiter was conceived as a mission to get close to the sun, above the poles, and with instruments that contain both cameras that sample from far away and plasma sensors that sample in situ. Solar Orbiter en sí es, es una fascinante aventura humana, lo llamo así, porque eh, eh, nos vamos a arriesgar y estamos poniendo muchos esfuerzos para hacer cosas muy complejas que nunca se han hecho. Y eso lo vamos a lograr gracias a una combinación muy especial de instrumentos que por primera vez se juntan a bordo de una nave. Si no fuera por esa colaboración internacional, sería bastante difícil que un solo país eh, lograra, lograra el desarrollo de, de cada uno de los instrumentos a bordo de la nave, porque en definitiva lo que hacemos es poner en común experiencias distintas y conocimientos distintos. Cada uno pone lo que más sabe y, y lo ponemos en común para un, lograr un objetivo igualmente común. A mí me gusta, me gusta pensar que los científicos somos un modelo en el que mirarse, en que la sociedad se debería mirar para trabajar en común. Eh, el trabajo normal de los científicos es poner en común con los otros las los conocimientos, en este caso, es trabajar codo con codo para producir un, un, una herramienta que va a ser útil para toda la comunidad, porque no solo los equipos que estamos desarrollando el instrumento lo vamos a explotar, sino cualquier científico en cualquier lugar del mundo. Eso, si se analiza fríamente desde fuera, no deja de ser pues eso, un, un, un ejemplo que, que si se llevara a cabo en otros en otros aspectos sociales sería maravilloso. The scientific payload of the Solar Orbiter is formed by diverse instruments developed by different institutions and international entities. Solar Orbiter is equipped with 10 scientific instruments. One of them is the Energetic Particle Detector, the EPD, developed by scientists and engineers from the United States, Germany and Spain. Its development, as well as the scheduling of future research projects involving its use, is being conducted at the University of Alcalá under the leadership of Professor Javier Rodríguez Pacheco, the head researcher for the EPD. Amongst other tasks, he's in charge of coordinating the Solar Orbiter Project Office and the main researchers responsible for the rest of the instruments regarding everything related to the EPD and to the fulfillment of the mission's scientific objectives. EPD, que son las siglas de Energetic Particle Detector, es el detector de estas partículas energéticas emanadas por el Sol. Es un detector complejo en el sentido de que tiene muchos sensores desarrollados cada uno por una institución, generalmente en países distintos, en este caso tenemos contribuciones de otros países, ¿no? que cubren distintos rangos tanto de energía de esas partículas como incluso de composición química. Estamos hablando de saber no solamente qué partículas con qué energía me están llegando, sino saber discernir si lo que yo acabo de recibir es un núcleo de carbono, es un núcleo de hidrógeno o es un núcleo de helio. ¿no? Todo ese espectro es el que va a cubrir EPD en la ciencia que va a hacer cuando vuele en Solar Orbiter. Experiment Manager, la traducción al castellano es jefe de proyecto y su labor fundamental es asegurarse que el proyecto se ejecuta eh, dentro de los plazos establecidos y con el presupuesto eh, acordado. Esa es su principal labor y para ello debe ser capaz también de anticipar problemas y de gestionar los recursos que tiene a su disposición para, como he dicho, poder ejecutar el proyecto eh, convenientemente. El IQ podríamos decir que es la unidad de control del instrumento, como su nombre indica. El instrumento está formado por una serie de sensores que se dedican a medir energía de las partículas en distintos rangos 
y eh, el, la IQ se encarga de recoger la información proporcionada por todos los sensores que están distribuidos a lo largo del satélite, centralizarla, eh, procesar los datos y finalmente enviar esa información hacia el ordenador de la nave que a su vez los envía a tierra y se encarga también del proceso inverso, es decir, eh, recibe la información desde tierra, las órdenes y las procesa, algunas van dirigidas a la misma y ella se encarga de procesarlas y si no las redirige a los sensores. A grandes rasgos esa es, digamos, la funcionalidad de la unidad. The EPD will measure the composition, fluxes and temporal variations from both the superthermal particles and the energetic particles emitted by the Sun. The scientific topics that will be studied include the sources, acceleration mechanisms and transport procedures of these particles. The EPD will measure the composition, fluxes and temporal variations from both the superthermal particles and the energetic particles emitted by the Sun. Step, superthermal electrons and protons. EPT and HET, electron-proton telescope and high-energy telescope, both sharing the same electronic box. And SIS, superthermal ions spectrograph. These sensors are distributed across the spacecraft's exterior and connected to a single instrument and data processing monitoring unit that will also provide the power necessary for them to function properly. This unit is known as the Instrument Control Unit, or ICU, and will serve as the true brains of the EPD. When you work in a project international in which there are no borders, in which it doesn't matter whether the one who is at your side is from Korea, South, German, Estadounidense, if the only thing that matters is that it is pushing you in the same direction, I think that that is one of the principal motives that animan to participate in these projects. There are millions of bridges in the head, because it is a complex project, as you can imagine, but the project is not only of the PD, but of the Solar Orbiter, which includes many more countries, agencies, different agencies, European agencies, NASA, agencies, European agencies, 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 agencies
The relationship between humanity and this star has gone through varied phases, from the initial notion of this celestial body as a deity to the view that it is currently the most important astronomical target for our society. A launch will probably be just another step on the road towards a potentially deeper understanding of this star. Such an adventure will certainly be joined by other new protagonists in the not-too-distant future.